there's also, I mean, maybe this is me being nitpicky, but in the very beginning, you hear on the radio how they found the the bodies in the first from the first movie, and then a little bit later, the police find them. What the fuck is that? Just really, you know, that attitude where, where the press just really goes and makes stories that like they. You know, going to a house before the police have even been there. Michael Myers also just barely chases anyone in it. it I also personally thought that, I mean, that that kid who, like, I'm not sure it's really said, but I guess it was like that, don't know if it if it is just an urban legend or if people have actually done this, but the thing about, like, razor blades in the candy um, that, you know, the kids would get, and because just profusely bleeding out of the mouth and just I thought that was actually potentially creepy and I've got to attribute it to Rick Rosenthal's lackluster direction that it really wasn't that compelling or that because that was a really scary idea you know that someone some that actually happening to someone but yeah so this answers several questions that were left unanswered in the first one and that should have always remained unanswered because people would still be arguing on the internet these 31 years, 32 years later, whatever, about what exactly it was. And there'd be theories and there'd be different groups of people who'd be saying different things and that would be perfect because that was what John Carpenter wanted. He didn't want a perfect answer. It's like with The Thing. You don't, there's not supposed to be a perfect answer. Answers are boring. It's fiction. It's not reality. We don't need to know all the facts. When something has for sure, you know, has a face on it or has a definite physical body, when it's no longer just mysterious and what exactly is... I mean, that's, that's one of the big mistakes that these sequels keep making. They keep trying to fucking explain it. That's not what... That was what made the first one perfect, that it wasn't explained. That it was so... It, it was so seemingly unmotivated. One day, this six-year-old grabs a knife and stabs his fucking sister to death. That's terrifying. Especially if we don't know why. Especially if it's just, like, apparently... It's just pure evil, you know. Yeah, I think that's all I've got for the second one, so. I actually don't hate this one. A lot of people do. And I could be really obnoxious and just say it's only because Michael Myers is not in it. But I don't think that's entirely true. It's not a great movie. But you gotta admit, it's kind of fun. You've got the fucking... One of the rocks from Stonehenge. You know, part of that formation. Running... These... Um, amalgamations of magic and science. Meant to kill all of America's children. I mean, that, just think about that for a second. And think about... I, I personally find the ending rather chilling, you know, with, um, I, I think, uh, the, what's his name, uh, I think Tom Atkins does a pretty good job, and then, at the, the, I mean, there at the end where he's saying, stop it, stop it, stop it, and then it just fades to black, and it just, I really thought that was very chilling, and just a very, um, I, I like ambiguous endings, and, uh, I mean, if you watch that and have in mind that yeah, the, the idea is that if that TV signal does not stop, every child in fucking America, I mean, that's, that's millions of children, would die, and there's just nothing anyone can do about it, and, um, the, um, I mean, all the, the snakes and the bugs and shit. Um, someone pointed out on the um, on the commentary track on the DVD, there's like a, a film critic and um, a horror expert um, talking about it. Uh, they kind of like it, um, it sounded like. 
and th th uh, one of them uh, says, "Is it really that scary? Oh, there's not. I mean, how how are a few snakes and bugs gonna? But yeah, but this is, as the other one pointed out, this is all the children in America. I mean, that amounts to a shitload of bugs and snakes, you know, and they're gonna be all over the place, and a lot of parents are gonna bite it too, and just." the idea that this this uh, Irish guy would try to um, do uh, child sacrifices again after um, you know uh, after all those years where it wasn't and also partially as a fucking revenge on the children who begged for candy from strangers I just I think it's a very uh, interesting, and um, you know, I I think Dan O'Hurley he does it really good. I mean, um, uh, and if you think he looks kind of familiar, he's the old man, Robocop one and two. Plus, it's got I mean, it's got fucking androids, and the ending you know, with her inexplicably being an android, and if she was an android when they were destroying the other androids and sabotaging the whole thing, why didn't she intervene and? Just, it makes no sense, and then the fucking Stonehenge zaps, you know, Cochrane out of existence, and I, I think it's a lot of fun, and um, and just, and the idea that you know the the androids wear gloves in spite of the fact that they obviously have no fingerprints, wipes off the blood in spite of the fact that he's just gonna go out and torch himself after killing um, the the witness dude in the beginning and the the romance that makes absolutely no sense and was put there so they could put some eye candy for us young males in the film and um, just you know I, I think it's a lot of fun I um, I, I would say um, part of the reason is probably also it's such a different movie. It's not really um, stalker kind of, and it's it's a bit campy. It's it's kind of camp sci-fi, and that was not something you'd expect from Halloween back then. You know, from a movie in that series. I do think. I mean. As far as I understand, it was John Carpenter's original plan to do it that way, to make... He, he wanted Halloween 2 to be a completely different story, but the studio demanded he bring Michael Myers back, so he figured, okay, I'll kill him off at the very end, I'll torture him, he, they can't bring him back. Somehow they did. And I actually, I, I do kind of like it. I think it's, it's fun, um, unpretentious, not to be taken seriously, but, you know... A fun ride and scary, chilling, creepy um, at points. And I also like that the main character is kind of flawed. You know, he's not perfect. Um, you know, he's um, kind of an alcoholic, clearly, and just and no longer a teenager. Um, that may have bothered people also that this was no longer about teenagers getting killed. It's also fun how the um, that was also something they pointed out on the commentary track. The the androids are like, you know, super tough and shit, but you can still punch them in the gut and they're dead and they'll be bleeding orange marmalade and die. I also think that the opening credits are kinda cool and once you've seen more than once you've seen the entire movie, you know exactly what the opening credits mean 